the beginning of an extremely important stretch of games in South Philadelphia commences tonight. 11 significant days, 11 essential games, all within the confines of the place your Phillies call home. The welcome mat might not be as cozy as you think. The first visitor walking through the door is the reigning 2013 Cy Young Award winner. And when he arrives, you can be certain he is prepared to take the mound. Town and Clayton Kershaw is the pitcher on the mound. That's who we spotlight, and we will in just a moment. But Yasiel Puig is one of the hottest hitters in the National League, and he certainly has a following. Tonight is game one of a three game series between the Phillies and the Dodgers. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. Matt Stairs is back with us. Greg Murphy will be along in just a little bit. It's the Dodgers and the Phillies. The Phillies took three of four from Los Angeles earlier this season. We'll see what they have in store for this weekend series against L.A. Both these teams still kind of trying to find themselves. Yeah, they really are, especially the last time when they faced each other out in L.A. The big thing about that series is, is that all of a sudden the Phillies were coming through getting very good timely hitting. And the big thing right now that I see is that the average is pretty good for L.A. at 275 and scoring 4.7 runs per game. But the problem is right now is the 4.31 ERA that the pitchers are throwing out there, which tells me that they're not playing in a lot of one-run games and they have to battle back all the time. Now, on the Phillies, the other hand, have lost a lot of one-run games, and they've still struggled with the bullpen. And they're still struggling here at Citizens Bank Park. That's why this 11-game homestand is so important. And tonight, it doesn't get much easier because tonight they've got to face Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, and what can you say? A 2013 Cy Young Award winner. This guy here, every time he goes out there, he creates a new pitch with a curveball. Let's change up the slider down and in. It doesn't matter. He has great control of everything he throws. The thing about him is he never really looks like he's rattled. He always feels like he can make one quality pitch to get out of the inning or get a big double play or a big strikeout. The key tonight is with this guy is you got to attack early because once you get two strikes, he has a lot of pitches that he can throw with a curveball, the slider down and in, and a very good change up to strike you out. We figure over the last four years, he's struck over 900 guys. It's incredible to think where his career will be eventually. Back in 2013 when he won the Cy Young Award, 16 wins. That's kind of low, but a 1.83 ERA and 232 strikeouts. So he is a difficult customer for the Phillies to face in game one of this series, however, he is one in four against the Phils lifetime. It is game one. Roberto Hernandez will be back on the mound for the Phils out of the bullpen and back in the starting rotation, making his eighth start of the year. Kershaw has been banged up. That's why this is only his fifth start of the season. Well, a couple of very hot hitters in the month of May. Yasiel Puig has been one of the hottest in the National League. But then on the Philly side, Marlon Bird has swung the bat very well, including a big home run in yesterday's ballgame. He said he knew that one right there. Had a chance to be into the bushes, and it was. Lineups at first pitch when we return.
Time Sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Budweiser, here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Well, back here at Citizens Bank Park, it's an absolutely gorgeous night for baseball. It's a great way to start the holiday weekend. The Phillies have taken the field, and Roberto Hernandez back in the rotation and on the mound for the Phillies, getting set to face off, face the Dodgers after a few relief appearances. Let's take a look at Los Angeles' starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sport. Leading it off at second base, D. Gordon. Sean Fig is the third baseman, bats second. Yasiel Puig hits third, followed by Adrian Gonzalez, the first baseman. Andre Ethier's at center field, he'll hit fifth. Carl Crawford, sixth. And the bottom third of Ellis, get ready for this one, Era Barrena, the shortstop, and Clayton Kershaw, the pitcher, he'll bat ninth. Matt will have you say that name over and over again for the rest of the evening. Shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Roberto Hernandez's numbers, 2-1 and one, with a 3.98 ERA. 35 strikeouts in 40 and two-thirds innings. Yeah, he's coming off a couple times out of the bullpen. You're going to see 90, 94 mile an hour sinker. Uh, a very good changeup, and I'd like to see him mixing a little bit of slider tonight. Well, D. Gordon's the first batter he'll face, and the first pitch is in there for a strike, so we're underway. Gordon playing second base as he continues to make the transition from second base, or from shortstop to second base. He's hitting 296, so average wise, he's been good. He's been getting on base. And he's been stealing bases. And he lines one to right field a base hit. His dad Tom is here watching. Flash, the former Philly closer. He wants his hand guard from the Dodger dugout. Maybe if they don't bring it out to him, he won't try to steal a base. He has stolen 25 bags so far. He's been caught three times. And they have finally found the hand brace. Or I should say the hand guard. His 25 stolen bases, by the way, are more than 10 teams in Major League Baseball combined. So Hernandez will have to keep him close. Sean Figgins ready to dig in and taking his time. And then Roberto Hernandez steps off. There's a slide step, and the pitch is in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Sean Figgins missed all of last year. He went to spring training with the Miami Marlins. Didn't do too badly, hit 308 in spring training, but was released on the 20th of March and did not sign with anybody. Gordon goes, the pitch is in the dirt, and throw to second, not in time. Not too much that Carlos Ruiz could do. He can flat out fly. Yeah, and he gets an unbelievable jump, but the thing about him is that he's about halfway to second base and he kind of kicks into another gear. He had an early start. Where it's very important now with the pitchers, you're going to have to hold the ball a little longer and not let him get a running start. But Chuch had no chance on that. He stole that off Hernandez. And now Hernandez has to be careful because he will steal third. It doesn't matter if there's a righty or a lefty up. I think it's overall hitting 261. He was two for five in the series against the Mets. He shows bunt, takes inside, two and one. Let's don't forget who's coaching first base for the Dodgers. Davy Lopes, who's unbelievable of, of finding these tips of when guys are going to throw when they're coming to first base. He helped that team in 08 and 09 to steal as many bases because he's very good at it. Everyone's bunted foul, and it's 2 and 2. Yeah, there have been a lot of coaches that you've been around. There's a lot of coaches I've been around. That guy right there makes a difference in the way a team plays and what they do. Plus, he's funny as heck to talk to because he has an opinion <laughs> about everything. <laughs> he does. Two balls and two strikes to Figgins. 
playing third base tonight for the Dodgers. And a change up pulled foul. Look out, Murph, over his head. Juan Uribe, who is the normal third baseman, is on the disabled list for Los Angeles, so they're going to have to mix and match over there at third. Out toward left. Darren Ruff, his first opportunity. Gordon is tagging, and Ruff uh, has to spin the throw, and he does a nice job. Time now for our Nissan Keys to tonight's ball game. Well, I think the most important thing tonight is everyone knows Hernandez is a change-up fastball guy. He needs to mix in that slider, keep the hitters off balance, and the hitters continue to have good at bats versus Kershaw throughout the, throughout the night. Yeah, because some of the Phillies hitters have very good numbers against Clayton Kershaw. Well, what a way! And now Yasiel Puig, who's hit in three straight, it's only part of the story though. He has three home runs and six RBIs on the road trip alone. And the Dodgers say he's playing free and easy. Not putting a whole lot of pressure on himself, just playing the game the way he played it the first month he was up last year. There goes Gordon. The pitch is taken high. Ruiz's throw is also high. And Gordon is safe at third. So two stolen bases for Gordon. He has 27 on the season. You can just see Gordon's got a nice little, he's got a little walking lead. And really there's there's no excuse to allow a runner to have a walking lead. You have to change up the amount of times you look at there. You gotta hold a little longer and pay attention because he wants to get the third base as quick as he can. And usually the best time to do is after the first uh, during the first pitch. That one's lined to left softly. It'll score Gordon. It drops in for a base hit. So the Dodgers take a one-nothing lead. A single by Gordon, two stolen bases, and then the RBI single by Puig, his 38th RBI. The speed really does kill at times. And it really does. And this is just a, a two seamer that was supposed to be away. Came back over the plate, and Puig's been swinging the bat extremely well. I'm very fortunate that ball didn't go in the ballpark. That ball was in her half, right in his, the happy zone, and it jammed him some. So Puig's at first. You have to watch him too. He does have four stolen bases. He's been caught three times. And it's, he watches Gonzalez take it outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Gonzalez two for eight lifetime against Roberto Hernandez. One ball, no strikes. Out toward right center field. It's playable for Bird. It sounded like that ball hit toward the end of the bat. He may have cracked the bat. Yeah, they always, as a hitter, the, the toughest time for a hitter to square up a ball faced a guy who does a slide step is when he throws a good change up down. Because you're kind of thinking you have to react real quick. And all of a sudden, you see a very good change up down the zone. Has Gonzalez out in front of it and not being able to get a good uh, swing at it. That slow mo is awesome. Look at the pieces of the bat just filtering out. Two away. Andre Ethier is the hitter. Ethier batting fifth tonight. Slide step's a little different for Roberto Hernandez, isn't it? He, I mean, he always had somewhat of a slide step, but this is a little quicker to the plates. And it is, and, he, and his front leg, he has like a little kick to get the little extra on that pitch, but that's one thing you have to do is you, with the Dodgers. They love to steal bases, and they're very aggressive. Outside, one ball and one strike. Andre Ethier hitting 333 in the month of May. He played in two of the four games against the Phillies. He was 0 for 8 in Los Angeles against the Phillies. Runner 
Howard goes. Pitch is grounded to the first, and Ryan Howard is there. The side is retired. One run does score in the RBI single by Asiel Puig. Roberto Hernandez is through one. He threw 16 pitches. Phillies coming up for the first time. Kershaw here in 2014. Let's take a look at the Phil's starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Batting second again is Carlos Ruiz. Then Chase Utley and Marlon Bird. Ryan Howard bats fifth tonight with the lefty out on the mounds. Darren Ruff is in left field. He'll bat six. Cesar Hernandez, his first start in the big leagues at third base at seven. John Mayberry eighth. And batting ninth and pitching, of course, is Hernandez. And they will face 26-year-old left hander Clayton Kershaw, who has 79 career wins. ERA is high this year, but he gave up a lot of runs in his last outing. And that's partly the reason why his ERA is high. Yeah, and he relies on location. He has a good fastball anywhere between 92 and 94 miles an hour with a very good curveball. And he's had a hard time this year throwing that curveball for strikes. So hopefully he doesn't find that early in the game. Guys can sit on the fastball changeup. And as you saw, he's a 1 and 4 versus the Phillies with a 3.70 ERA. Well, that's our Budweiser scouting report. What the scouting report does not include is last year's Cy Young Award for Clayton Kershaw. And it's remarkable what he's been able to accomplish at such a young age. Matt, you talked about, you know, how many strikeouts he's amassed at such a young age. Well, and, and over four years, he has thrown over 900 innings in four years. And with the power arm that he has, and, he's, and he has... 921 punch outs in the last four years is remarkable. Jimmy Rollins leads it off. Rollins hitting 276 with six homers and 20 RBIs. He was 5 for 11 in the series against the Marlins. One ball, one strike. Jimmy, of course, if you, in case you missed it yesterday, moved into second place all time. In hits in Philly's history with 2,218. Two. Rollins has walked 16 times, partly because of what you're seeing him do here in his first at bat. He's been taking a lot of pitches. He's been running deep counts not only in his first at bat, but also throughout the rest of the game. Browns one over to third, scooped up by Figgins. One away here in the bottom of the first. Murph, what about the Phils and Clayton Kershaw and what they've been able to do against him? 
Well, Tom, you know, uh, Matt's key to the game, or one of his keys to the game, was to have good at-bats and continued success against Clayton Kershaw. And some of the guys uh, in Ryan Sandberg's lineup tonight have had success. Take a look at what Marlon Byrd has been able to do against Kershaw. Six for 11, batting 542. Carlos Ruiz at 385. He's got a couple of RBIs. And Chase Utley as well at 278. So there are a couple of guys that have real good success. Jimmy Rollins and Ryan Howard have not had as good of success against Clayton Kershaw. They'll hope to turn that around, but it's not to say that Kershaw has dominated the Phil's lineup over the years. Well, last five starts against the Phillies, Kershaw only has one win. He's one and one. Swing at a miss. It's one ball and one strike to Ruiz, who's hitting 266. There's Marlin. And Chase, of course, uh, both guys who have had some success against Clayton Kershaw, as Murph pointed out. I think a lot of us when Kershaw came up at, at such a young age I think we all wondered what would he be like as his career progressed because we've seen with some young hard throwers miles per hour dips as they get older but he's not just a thrower he is a pitcher he's evolved into a very good pitcher well and he's, and he's relied on all of his pitches his fastball his curveball his changeups just to throw for strikes and get not just for strikes but for swing and misses and he can throw it any pitch at any time to get a swing and miss, which we've seen a couple pitches to Carlos change ups. Now probably a fast one side. That's exactly what it was at 94. It's two and two. Oh, well, he's run the count to three two against the first two batters here tonight. And because of Rollins' foul ball, he's thrown 12 pitches to the first two. Manny Gonzalez is behind the plate. He's uh, been behind the plate for Phillies games a couple times this year. The crew chief is fielding Colbert. This is a young crew. With Seth Buckmeister at first, Brian Knight at second, and Colbert around at third. Toward left center field, Ethier is over. And man, was he playing deep, and that made that play so much easier for him. So they're two outs. Yeah, he's playing very deep right out here in center field. And Chuch puts a very nice swing on a fastball inside and allows him to have to be playing so deep to take a proper angle and basically run that ball down very easily. Puig plays deep. Carl Crawford plays deep. Yasiel Puig doesn't usually on the offside. Now with Utley up as a left-handed batter, he is playing deep and right. First pitch is over. It's 0-1. Utley hitting 337, which is third best in the National League. He's trying to get D Gordon. D Gordon's trying to get him in. He's trying to get D Gordon out into shallow right field. Up. Foul territory. Sean Figgins crosses over. And the side is retired. So Kershaw throws 17 pitches to retire the Phils. 1 2 3. Jimmy Rollins had an eight pitch at bat along the way. We'll go to the second with the Dodgers up 1 0.
baseball game, which is a 305 first pitch. Sunday, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 98, Ryan Sandberg, Plastic Louisville Slugger Bat, free to fans 14 and under. Order your tickets now by going to phillies.com. Carl Crawford leads it off for the Dodgers against Roberto Hernandez. Hernandez delivers a strike. It's 0-1. Crawford is batting 269. He has three homers and 14 runs batted in. That ball is hit well. Deep to right field. Forget about it. 2-0 Dodgers on top here in the top of the second. Well, there are times when hitters know what's coming. They guess right. I don't know if he knew it was coming, but he certainly adjusted and he kind of golfed that one right out of the ballpark. And, and, and for a hitter, when you go up there and you know that a guy throws basically a fastball changeup, this is just a changeup come out of the hand that just kind of spins up there and goes down that happy zone for a left hander. Uh, one thing about a changeup, when you hit it good, it's very easy to make the rotation change directions and they go a long way. So 2 0 Dodgers and A.J. Ellis takes low. A.J. Ellis is hitting 167. The Phillies did not see him when the Dodgers were out in Los Angeles. The Phillies were out in Los Angeles because he was uh, recuperating from knee surgery. I think he was out on his rehab assignment when the Phillies were out in L.A. One day he was in Los Angeles because he he caught Clayton Kershaw as Kershaw was throwing uh, batting practice. That ball is looped out towards center. John Mayberry is there. During the 2014 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. All right, Matt, I think this could be the hardest name that I've ever called coming up to the plate. A Reese Bell era Barena, who was just called up making his major league debut. He takes a strike. It's 0 1. Look at that. That's a lot of letters. He defected from Cuba. The Dodgers signed him to a five year, $25 million contract. And they've called him up from double A. At Chattanooga, he hit 208 with a home run and six RBIs. Puig's former teammate in Cuba. And he's down on strikes two away. When he arrived, Charlie Steiner, who uh, tonight is doing television for the Dodgers, asked him the pronunciation. He told him. And he said, You can just call me Ari. So that's what they call him. Ari. Era Barina. Here's Clayton Kershaw. And he takes outside. It's 1 0. Kershaw is hitting 286. He's just two for seven, but he is a good hitting pitcher. Tops that one over the head of Hernandez. Nothing better hurry and just in time to get Clayton Kershaw. Side is retired, but the Dodgers tack on another run. Carl Crawford's solo home run has made this a 2 0 ball game. Marlon Bird will lead it off when we return.
watch NBC 10. Count on it. Bottom of the second, Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. Game one of this three game series. It'll be Marlon Bird, Ryan Howard, and Darren Ruff. Phillies were in Miami the last three days. They lost two of three, including yesterday's ball game. Well, as Clayton Kershaw finishes up his warm up tosses, let's toss over to Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, thank you very much, Don. Well, it is a special night here at Citizens Bank Park. Let me introduce you to Marcus Schultz, who is with me, one of the uh, the most well-known DJs and music producers worldwide. Originally from Germany, you just mentioned Miami. You make your home de uh, down there now, but uh, we're going to have a pretty special event coming up after this ball game tonight. Tell us about it. Yeah, I'm really excited over here uh, on the concourse. We're going to do a, a, an EDM concert, um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people here just for uh, not just the ball game, but for that. So I think it's going to be a nice after party, especially if we get the win. All right, explain to me EDM, uh, electronic dance music. But uh, what does that mean for the folks that may not know? Well, you know, I always say it's like imagine uh, what the music is going to sound like in the year 3000. You know, computer music. That's what EDM is. It's electronic dance music. Um, it's it's all the rage, you know. I, I mean, uh, the the EDM scene in the United States is the envy of the world right now. We have some of the best music, EDM musicians and DJs here in the United States, and it's just a it's a massive scene right now. And I imagine you can uh, find a lot of work down there in Miami, can you not? Oh yeah, there's always <laughs> parties in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not just a, a, a DJ, but you're also a baseball fan, so you got a chance to throw out the first pitch tonight. That had to be a pretty big thrill for you. You know what? I think uh, my head got a little bit too big. I said, you know what? I'm going to throw from the rubber and I predict I'm going to throw a strike and I wound up bouncing it to Jimmy so uh, oh well it happens now Tom we should point out that uh, folks uh, here in the ballpark can go to the concert tonight but also that uh, ticket windows are going to be open for 20 minutes after the game tonight if you want to come down just for the concert you can also do that uh, can you tell folks uh, it's about two hours you're going to be playing is that right yeah I'll play until uh, just after midnight and uh, you know listen I'll be playing until they uh, they cut the power off on it uh, you know so uh, who knows <laughs> It's going to be one of those parties, Tom, but we might have to hang out for that as well. Marcus, good luck tonight. Thanks. Uh, welcome to Philadelphia, and thanks for everything. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, guys, we'll send it back upstairs. Murph, thank you very much. You know, last year the Phillies had an event like this, and uh, uh, there were a few hundred people that stayed, and it was pretty loud, and it was obviously electric. And Jimmy Rollins was out there when Marcus was setting up today as he was going through his sound check. As Marlon Bird swings over the top of that pitch, and it's one and two, so that's where it's going to be. And it's in left field near uh, Harry the Kays here at Citizens Bank Park. Two balls and two strikes to Bird. Here's Marcus's pitch on top of the mound. What do you think, Matt? Pretty good form. You know what? I don't mind it because he was actually throwing from the top of the mound. A lot of people throw in front, like Moyer. And <laughs> <laughs> like Moyer. <laughs> Bird is struck out. First strikeout for Kershaw. So when Pedro Feliz is here tomorrow and he's throwing out the first pitch, you're going to make him throw from the mound. Well, this is just a very good changeup right here thrown by Kershaw getting Marlon Bird out. Hitters know and pitchers know who you hit well against. I guarantee Kershaw's gone through the years and looking at the scouting report. This is going to have to make a change. Good, because Marlon, as we mentioned before, was six for 11 before that at bat. One away, Ryan Howard is up. Howard hitting 239 this year, seven home runs. And you got a pitch to hit right there, a 95 mile an hour fastball that was supposed to be in a little bit more. 0 oh and 1. D. Gordon in shallow right. Figgins crosses over from third to be the third infielder on that side. Two good swings. I can't imagine he's going to get a fastball anymore. If he does, it's going to be like an elevated fastball. Or, but you're right, he had two very good swings at that. I'm just trying to figure out how, if we can get any deeper in right field. He's <laughs> almost down in the middle of the... Uh, the... Oh, he did get another fastball right on the outside part of the plate. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Kershaw. Well, this is sometimes where a hater can outthink themselves and sit on an off-speed pitch. Kershaw comes back and paints him with a, a very nice located fastball blowing away.
Two outs. Darren Ruff is the batter making his first start of 2014. That curveball is something that Ruff saw last year against Kershaw. And he starts him off with a breaking pitch. Darren's 0 for 3 against Clayton. One ball, one strike. Ruff had one at bat in the series against the Marlins. He hit into a double play that was in game two, but late in the ball game, that was probably the hardest hit ball the Phillies had. Darren uh, was with the Phillies during spring training, strained his oblique toward the end of spring training. Took a while to rehab that back and spent some time in single A and triple A rehabbing before the Phillies uh, took him off the disabled list, sent him to Lehigh Valley. And that eventually brought him up to the big leagues the other day. Ball four and rough draws a walk with two men down. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Melissa Brown of Downingtown. Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game. Melissa will win $100. Cesar was 0 for 2 in the series against the Marlins. Flying in last night, the clouds uh, were unbelievable with the storms that were flowing through. Uh, that's a pretty good sight right there. There are some storms in the area. Up high, one ball, one strike to Hernandez. I almost went to the Lehigh uh, Valley game last night in Lehigh to watch the Triple A team play. Right. And saw the weather report teacup size hail ball. We're hitting up northern PM. You, I, did, you didn't want to bring your truck out in that. I thought I'd, I'll stay right here and wait for the Montreal Canadiens game to come on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Another pitch high, two and one. Yeah, the Phillies were delayed a little bit coming in last night because of the storms and the pictures we were getting from people back in the Delaware Valley about the howl and everything. Oof. It was, it was remarkable. So clear in certain parts over in New Jersey, but there is some rain in the area. 74 today was beautiful. Once it stopped raining this morning, things kind of cleared up. Very comfortable day. Well, rough will be off now with the count three and two and two men down. A lot of three ball counts for Kershaw. Back toward the middle, over the mound. Gordon is there on the backhand. Side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left for the Phils. We've completed two. We go to the third. Kershaw and the Dodgers lead it 2 nothing.
fan section for all the information. And please submit your answer on the subject line. Matt, you like that swing? Yeah, it was pretty good. All right, well, here's the question. On October 21st, 1971, the Phillies traded Larry Heisel to the Dodgers for what player? Oh, you're really going to have to dig back to your Phillies history on this one. I was three. How old were you at that time? You were four? Someone's around there. <laughs> Answer will be revealed in just a little bit. I do have a hint for you. I'm not going to give it to you right now, but I will give it to you as we move forward if you don't get the answer. Top of the order, D. Gordon leads it off and he takes on the inside corner. Gordon singled and scored in the first, stole a couple of bases. Ground ball right side. Even an easy ground ball, as his dad, Flash, knows. Even an easy ground ball, you got to get it over there quick. Tom Gordon saved 42 games for the Phils in three years. What a great guy. You know, during that stretch when the Phillies won all the divisional crowns that you were a part of, Gordon, Lidge, all those guys, they made it a competition out in the bullpen. And that's why the bullpens, I mean, the talent was part of it. But the, the competition that you know, Gordon, Ryan Matson, Lidge, Chad Durbin, Scott Air, they fed off each other. It's well, they, so they, cool. Well, they challenged each other, you know, to to top my outing. If I'm going to go out and, and have a good outing, I want you to, to top it. And uh, they were tremendous competitors, but they were also tremendous uh, teammates. And, and I had a chance to play with Flash a few times, and he was tremendous, always given his uh, inside of, of what he likes to do against left handers. And he'd ask questions as well as what we look for often. Turned himself into a very good closer after being a starter at the beginning of his career. Uh, had a really good curveball, live fastball. Started with the Royals and then transitioned into the closer's role. 0 oh 2 to Sean Figgins. Tom has another son. Uh, who could be a, a big pick in this year's draft. One ball and two strikes to Figgins who flied to left his first time up. Carlos gives it a look, but that's out of play. After the Phillies wrap up their series against the Dodgers, they'll begin a three game series on Monday against the Colorado Rockies. We'll have a salute to veterans on Memorial Day, Tuesday, 7 05, Wednesday, 7 05. You can get tickets for all three games, including Monday's Hatfield Dollar Dog Night on Phillies.com. Easy play for John Mayberry. Well, it's a good thing he didn't go last night. <laughs> That's Lehigh Valley's ballpark. <laughs> that was long before the game, but you would have had a drive in that. I'm sure you have storms like that in Canada. Yeah, but not a hail like that. That was. Scary. I knew they were getting hit hard up there, but um, now that I've seen that, I probably wish I drove up because I might have a chance to see. You being a storm chaser and everything, Rollins makes an unbelievable play and his throw not in time. Puig just too quick. An infield hit. He is playing as good a shortstop as we've seen. In the last couple of years from Jimmy Rollins. I mean, he is making every single play. And this is a great jump and caught that ball behind him and oh, made an unbelievable strong throw across. But just watch the hustle. This guy come out of the batter's box and he smiles ahead. He was trying to run.
many other players Rollins would have had him. Yep. Definitely any catcher. <laughs> any catcher Rollins would have had him. <laughs> Fly ball to left center not that deep playable for Mayberry. Now the side is retired no runs one hit. And one man left for the Dodgers. It's turned out to be a pretty nice night here in Philadelphia. Let's hope it stays that way as we go to the bottom of the third. Pennsylvanians every day by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment and by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com for your local dealers today. 2 0 Los Angeles is on top. Single run in the first, one in the second on a home run by Carl Crawford. Let's take a look at our Mazda leaders since 1920. Clayton Kershaw has the lowest ERA in baseball. All right. Hey, Dad. Just so you know, I've got a higher, I've got a better ERA than Whitey Ford since 1920. Sandy Koufax, Jim Palmer, Spud Chandler. It's putting together some great numbers. John Mayberry rips one foul. I mean, the names in that list is just, it's, re, it's remarkable what he's done so far, and he's just getting better and better every year. The Phillies have run a lot of deep counts on him tonight. That is uh, one positive through the first two innings. Mayberry hits one in the air to center. Not that deep. Ethier comes in. Roberto 0 for 12 this year. He's up there looking like he wants to take a hack. Placed on the disabled list a couple days ago. Just resting. Hoping that shoulder uh, will be well after a 15 day stay on the DL. We just watched uh, Roberto go down on strike. So, two outs here in the third. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. It's Memorial Day weekend. Hope everybody has a safe one. He gets a chance to honor those who have served our country. Three oh five game tomorrow, five oh five on Monday.
Jimmy Rollins takes a strike. It's all one. One and one. I think I may have said shoulder with the elbow, of course. Rollins lifts it towards shallow right center. D. Gordon backs up on it. And he makes the catch. Side is retired in order. So through three, the Phillies have one base runner against Clayton Kershaw. It was a two out walk in the second. We'll go to the fourth here at South Philadelphia. Dodgers two, Phillies nothing. Pulling a doubleheader at the office, W.B. Mason's huge selection of Green Mountain Coffee K-Cup packs keeps you running and provides fan base satisfaction. Order by 1130 and get free same-day delivery. Who but W.B. Mason. We go to the top of the fourth. Andre Ethier will lead it off. He grounded out to Howard to end the first. Wind is picked up here at Citizens Bank Park. Good change up, 0 and 1. See so yeah, how the clouds have uh, sort of rolled into. The skies have darkened some. I'm not sure there were some showers in the area. They're hopefully, hopefully going to go north of the ballpark. He's got a really good tempo going tonight. I know he's given up the two runs and four hits, but his pace is really good. Oh. Ball hits Ethier. He had a base runner to start the fourth. Got to overthrow a two seamer right here that tried to throw that front door sinker. He actually hit him in the back calf, right up the shin of the back leg with his hardest pitch of the night at 92. Well, here's Crawford. He threw him a, uh, a first pitch off speed pitch his last time up, and he belted it for a home run. A home run estimated 401 feet. As you can see, all the people in the stands are heading for shelter. As that wind's picked up, change directions coming in now. And it sure has. Ground ball to first. Howard steps on the bag, throws to second, and in time to get Ethier. 
Nice play all the way around. If it stands, Don Mattingly may or may not come out. He's got his arms crossed in the dugout, so it doesn't look like he's going to come out and argue that one and ask for replay. Rollins anticipated where that throw was going to be. Ryan did a nice job of tagging the bag and making a strong throw. The throw was on the left side of the bag, but Jimmy Rollins made a nice quick tag. I find it interesting to see how slow Ellis is walking up the, the home plate right here to try to stall to see if Manley wants to go and challenge it or not. Yeah, by rule, if the pitcher's on the rubber and the hitter's in the box, then you can't challenge it at that point. And that's what's happening here. I don't know if it's because of the uh, shower that's coming in or what, but it didn't look like they even moved to review that one. 3 6 on the double play. So as the rain starts to fall, folks are going to get some cover. Outside, three and one. By pitch, and even on this walk to AJ Ellis, it did look as if he uh, overthrew a couple of those pitches. Here's Arab Arena up for the second time. He struck out his first time up. Side one and zero. Unfortunately, if they try to put the tarp on now, the way the wind is blowing, it's going to be a tougher task. Tommy made a good point about him overthrowing a little bit. It seems like he's got a little more oomph on his fastball, and that's one thing that scares you about a guy who's a very good sinker ball changeup guy that is overthrown. Trying to back off maybe a little bit here with the count two and zero oh. in the dirt, three balls and no strikes. By the way, did you see that shot? That was a live. That's a live shot. It's not raining in Center City, but you can see the rain in the distance. Is that remarkable? So he's walked back to back hitters. Yeah, Carlos did the right thing here. He's got to go out and just chat with them and calm them down a, a bit. Fielding Colbert, who's the crew chief, it's his decision as to what they're going to do. Browns crew is ready in case they want to put the tarp on the field. There's, there's folks down the left field line. MLB TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Phillies.com for details. On the field, Fielding Colbert has called time, and I think he's thinking, "All right, let's get it on." And hopefully, this will just be a quick shower. So the ground school will take the cover off the tarp. Fans are booing as Mike Buckholder goes out to talk to Colbert just to give him an idea of how long the storm's going to be. There is a cell that's moving through the area, so we're going to be in a little bit of a delay here at Citizens Bank Park, unfortunately. Here in the top of the fourth inning. The Dodgers lead it 2-0. They scored a run in the first and a run in the second. We'll take a break. 
Two outs here in the fourth. Runners on first and second. The count one ball and one strike on Clayton Kershaw.
Hernandez is still pitching for the Phils. And we're going to resume play in just a moment. Roberto's already finished his warm-up tosses. The base runners have gone back to their respective bases. A.J. Ellis went back to second base. And Arab Arena went back to first base for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw is due to step back into the box. The count is one ball and one strike to Clayton Kershaw. Dan Baker is... Uh, Resetting things here at Citizens Bank Park for the crowd that is going back to their seats. The rain's still falling, but just uh, very lightly at this point. Uh, the temperature has dropped. The wind is picked up. And the count one ball and one strike to Clayton Kershaw. So the delay is uh, going to be about 45 minutes, a little less than that. And the pitch to Kershaw in there for strike, and it's one and two. Kershaw grounded out to second his first time up. That was in the second inning. Dodgers scored a run in the first, one in the second on a home run by Carl Crawford. Two balls and two strikes. The official delay was 43 minutes. Good decision by Fielding Colbert to put the tarp on the field because it did start raining even harder once the tarp went on the field. Over to shortstop, Rollins backhands. He's going to set himself and fire to first in time to get Kershaw. Now the side is retired. No runs, no hits. Two men left. Set a 43-minute rain delay. Go further. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Budweiser. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. And buy Toyota. The Toyota Time Sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Folks are settling back in here at Citizens Bank Park after a 43 minute rain delay. The rain is still falling a little bit. Pizza still tastes good. Actually, the pizza would be great right now. Carlos Ruiz will lead it off. It'll be Ruiz, Chase Utley, and Marlon Byrd against Clayton Kershaw. All right, Matt, give us some insight as far as a pitcher. I know you never pitch, but do, do these delays bother these pitchers at all? I mean, 43 minutes, I mean, is that a long time for these guys to sit and wait? Uh, it, it, it could be. I, I think it's, it's early in the game. Uh, it's easier for them to get loose. Nowadays, you have the tunnels underneath where they can go down and keep on throwing a little bit, playing a little bit of soft toss, but I think it's going to be tougher if it's the seventh or eighth inning for a guy trying to come back out. But, you know, we're in the bottom of the fourth inning, and these guys are only 26 years old, so they should be able to do it. <laughs> well, and I wonder about that because we always, every time we have a rain delay, if it goes, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour, we wonder, well, is this guy going to come back? Is that guy going to come back? And I, I guess it depends on the guy, and I guess you're right. I guess it depends on the time of the game. And it really depends on the amount of pitches and, and how much you know, trouble he's been on throughout the game. Uh, Kershaw hasn't had a whole lot of trouble yet, so it's been a pretty easy uh, three and a half innings so far, so hopefully now that, that layover will have the fastball up and he'll lose that curveball and changeup. Well, he's run some pretty deep counts of the first three innings. His pitch count is at 44. Now the 
first pitch to Ruiz here in the fourth inside 1 0. Carlos fly to center his first time up. Hit the ball hard. And it's one and one as he takes a fastball. His ponchos are a challenge right now, the way the wind is blowing. If they're not on, folks behind home plate are having a little difficulty. So you have to stay calm, Matt, when you're putting those ponchos on. Chris Cashman doesn't need a poncho. He's in the red pullover right there. At the knees, and it's two and two. You know the guy in the blue in the back next to the uh, the young lady with the maroon sweatshirt. He was having some difficulty. <laughs> Another three ball, two strike count for Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> He's trying, he really is. Come on, give it one more try. One more try. Seven pitch at bat right now for Ruiz. This will be the eighth pitch coming to Carlos. <laughs> you're gonna have to have some instructions for that one. <laughs> you know you've made it when you're in the split screen at a ball game. Ball four. Ruiz is aboard. Second base runner for the Phils. It's the second walk issued by Kershaw. Time now for a, a Geico quote of the day. It comes from pitching coach Rick Honeycutt on Kershaw. The work ethic, the mental approach, day in and day out. He is a very rare person on and off the field. He has his priorities in order. He wants to be the best he can be and help the team. He's a very special man. That's high praise from a guy that's been a successful pitching coach and also a successful pitcher in the big leagues, Rick Honeycutt. Chase Utley popped out to finish up the first. Come on, Chase. Utley went after the first fastball and he fouls it back. It's 0 and 1. Cut is in the middle next to Tim Wallach with the glasses and Don Mattingly. Line drive down the left field line that's in for a base hit. Going toward the corner. Crawford will cut it off as it gets to the corner. Ruiz stops at third and Utley's aboard with his 20th double of the year. And that's the first hit of the night for the Phillies. We saw earlier this at bat chase was very aggressive after the first fastball we saw. Then all of a sudden Kershaw came back with a high fastball, almost in the exact same location. Chase stays with it, hits the ball down the left field line for a 20th double. And he gets to third base. Now we have second, third with one out. For Utley now a four-game hitting streak. We said he came into the game third in the league in hitting. And now Marlon Bird. Bird struck out his first time up. Dodgers are conceding a run for an out on the infield. Straight away in the outfield. Marlon said before the ball game that the two balls he hit yesterday, the home run and the ball that wound up going to the warning track and left, he gave great descriptions of both. He said, the one to left, I said, you know, I thought that was out off the bat. And he said, I didn't think so because I caught it so deep. The one he hit over the fence in center field, he said, was the best swing he's had all year. Uh, I mean, he had a, a 
Hook blast the center field. And I understand what he means by getting deep in the, in the, in the, in the strike zone. He didn't have that little uh, that oomph at the end of it with the wrist. So it was more of a guide going through the zone. But the money at the center field, the momentum's going towards center. The hands are back and you're driving it. Looks like he, I like to see right now stay back and work the ball to right field right here. Work the ball to right, get up the over to third and score Ruiz and give the Phils a run and then an opportunity to get a second one. No balls and two strikes. Swing and a miss. And Ellis will throw the first to finish off the strikeout. Second time Marlins been struck out tonight. Fourth strikeout overall for Kershaw. It's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. We'll show that photo a little later on. Howard went down looking three fastballs his first time up. He has Ruiz at third, Utley at second. Bat, a high foul pop off the third base side and out of play. This is supposed to be a fastball away and it comes inside and almost looks like it hits up off the end of the bat. You can get jammed, but. Where the ball started, I thought it was going to stay in, fair, in a foul territory, but one just brought it out behind the dugout. Fortunate break for Howard. He'll get another opportunity with the count 0 and 1. Well, he is pumping fastballs against Howard. He's seen five pitches and two at bats, and all five have been fastballs. That surprise you? Uh, I, I mean, I guess if he's looking at the location, his delivery, uh, a good fastball away, he might not think he can get the barrel to the ball. But he's taken three out of five pitches, three very good swings. In the dirt, finally throws a breaking pitch. That was a slider. on deck. Ruff walked his first time up. Philly's down 2 nothing, but they have a chance here with runners at second and third. And now one out. <laughs> Howard's above the National League average getting runners home from third with less than two outs. Two balls, two strikes. Out toward left. Crawford on the run. The wind is going to take this one out of play. A little bit, but I, I like the approach. I like the swing. His head's down. He has the extension. He's going through the ball, not trying to roll over to the second baseman. Her ball inside. So you talked about earlier in the ball game that he's had trouble getting that curveball over for strikes this year. A lot of times, people say that's his money pitch. So three balls, two strikes, one out for Ryan Howard here in the fourth. Mm. 
Kershaw's up to 64 pitches, 20 in this inning. Six three ball counts, five full counts so far. Well, they've done a good job of getting deep in the account, the, the at bats, seeing some pitches. And a lot of people will say, you know, hey, Ryan, good at bat. But Ryan knows he's had two or three pitches so far that's a bat where he should have thrown the ball. Got him. Ellis again will step in front of the plate and fire the first. That was a slider. Six strikeouts for Kershaw, who's won the battle against Bird and now Howard. That's what it makes it so frustrating on face on side young hitter. You a pitcher for you've had some good pitches to hit. Now all of a sudden you get the three balls, two strikes. You want to protect that fastball and throws that nice slider down in the end, and you commit so early. It, it, it gets frustrating as a hitter. With two away, Darren Ruff the batter with runners on second and third. And there's a strike to Ruff. Ruff walked his first time up. Darren played 12 games in the minor leagues, had 51 plate appearances. He had one home run during his uh, time in the minors, rehabbing and then playing for the Iron Pigs. And fastball low, one ball, one strike. I was wondering where that was, and Manny Gonzalez says inside. The Toyota Major League scoreboard the Nationals and the Pirates are battling out in Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh leads it for nothing Pedro Alvarez he's been under fire out in Pittsburgh because they've struggled so much he struggled well, he has a home run and two RBIs for Pittsburgh Jordan Zimmerman pitching for the Nationals swing and a miss he got him so after allowing the first two runners to get on base Clayton Kershaw comes back and strikes out the next three Six strikeouts overall. Phillies leave two in scoring position. We'll go to the fifth. It's two nothing Los Angeles.
this homestand with a five game series. It all starts on Thursday at 7.05. It's Jewish Federation of Greater Philadelphia Jewish Heritage Night. On Sunday the 1st, it's Total's Cliff Lee action figurine for fans 14 and under. There's a lot going on during that uh, series against the Mets. You can go to Phillies.com to purchase tickets. We go to the 5th. The rain continues to fall here in Philadelphia. And D. Gordon will lead it off. It'll be Gordon, Sean Figgins, Yasiel Pui. Clayton Kershaw allowed the double to Utley to put runners on second and third, but then mud and all, he was able to strike out the next three hitters. Shows bunt, takes low, two and one. Gordon is singled and scored. He's also grounded out to Utley. So he's one for two today. Tommy made the comment earlier, but Hernandez was in a good groove and he's working quick. As you can see, he slowed down his, his, his tempo a little bit. It looked like he wanted to get that last half inning out of the way. He's working slower. He's getting the ball down in the zone and taking his time in between pitches and gathering his thoughts. Yeah, the pitches aren't selling. What a play by Hernandez. In on the grass, he had to react quickly to retire D. Gordon, one out. Considering he's never played third on the major league level and has you know, time in the minor league level, they wanted to get him on the left side of the diamond and he's yeah, got to woke him up. And especially coming from a left handed bat, it, it really surprises you when a, when a ball that extremely that hard coming from a left handed hitter to the third baseman. Uh, but he made a very nice play and made it routine, really. Sean Figgins is the batter. Well, Murphy celebrating a birthday today, and uh, Ryan Sandberg said, listen, he played the left side of the infield of the minors, it was at shortstop. <laughs> He said, I wanted him to get a look on the left side of the infield here tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about, to, to see what he can do. Obviously, a more versatile uh, versatile player. Uh, if Cesar Hernandez can turn into that, then he's more valuable to this team. And you know, Ryan Sandberg said he, he wanted to get a look at him. He had he did struggle at third base down at double A when he went there. Uh, he had about 54 chances. He had eight errors in those 54 chances, but a lot of those were throwing errors. So he was out early today working with Larry Boa, working on the angles of throwing the ball from third base. And you know he's a terrific athlete that we've seen. So they hope that he'll be able to pick it up quickly because they certainly like his bat in the lineup as well. Yeah, and I think uh, you'll see as Cody Ashley getting the night off tonight. You'll see Ashley back in tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but Hernandez, you will see him. Playing a little short when Rollins needs a breather. Playing a little second when Utley needs a breather. He's not going to be a, an outfielder like he was last year uh, unless it's an emergency, according to Ryan Sandberg. That was all athleticism, though, right there on that play, but that ball hit by D. Gordon. Now the 2 2 pitch to Figgins. That one's hit toward first, caught out of the air by Ryan Howard, two away. Well, and if you look at when you're playing shortstop or you're playing second base, you can see where the, the catchers are set up. You can see the flight of the ball, how it's coming into the zone. Third baseman, you're taught to watch the strike zone and try to read off the guy's swing. You know, the last thing you want to do is watch the pitcher deliver a ball going to the catcher and then try to react that way. You, know, you try to see up where he's set up, the bad angle. And, that, and maybe that's the reason why he was having hard times because maybe he was out of position a little bit making those throws across. You have watching him throw even from shortstop uh, in the limited time, but mostly from second. He's got a pretty accurate arm. 
And a lot of times, guys will make er uh, errors at third base from having lazy feet, thinking it's such an easy throw across the middle of the infield that they really don't plant themselves and, and put a firm throw across, like Dave Holland used to do. Looks like he can still do it. <laughs> one and one to Puig. Puig has been on base twice. Single to left, single to short. Nice mix of pitches right there by Hernandez. He's ahead one and two. And it all started from the first pitch. On Puig, fastball way inside. And you could tell Puig didn't like it. Then all of a sudden he comes back and he throws a dart in the back outside corner for a strike. Comes back with a changeup. Now the frustration kicked him a little bit. Whoop. Cover the tarps a little slippery, Matt. He's got to pull his pants up. Oh, Hernandez. Ahead one and two to Yasiel Puig trying to finish him off here in the top of the fifth. That one is a slow roller to third barehanded by Hernandez and not in time. So Puig has two infield hits. I thought that hit his foot. But he started running. Well, Puig might be coming back toward the plate. Ryan Sandberg's coming out to talk to Manny Gonzalez, the home plate umpire. And the ball must like stop dead as soon as I took the swing. Yeah, that's a dead ball off the top of his toe. How about he, how about he just took off running, thinking I, I can still get a hit out of this? Smart. I mean, that's a that's one of those things where <laughs> you know you can beat it out, and you might as well go ahead and, and attempt it. Well, they'll confer on this one. This is not something that uh, can be reviewed. Uh, it's something they can just chat about. So that's my understanding is that they can't review it. Oh, they're going to say that he's at first base. I'm shocked by that. Now, Ryan Sandberg will come out and talk to Manny Gonzalez. If they were able to review this, then they would see clearly that it was a foul ball but they can't review a play like this and they can review a hit by pitch but this is not a reviewable play it's just a very good sinker that's inside and Reed hits on top of it and drives her off the top of his foot now after you see this replay that we're seeing and this is not something that is reviewable you might see it next year in the rule book. I would agree with you on that. There are they are going to tinker with. I mean, at least it seems that way. They're going to tinker with some things, and I think that is one that they could easily tinker with, uh, particularly when you have the slow mo like we have here tonight, and other teams have. Uh, Gonzalez, it's a fly ball to left center field, so no harm, no foul, as long as Darren Ruff can make this catch, and he does, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit. One man left. We've played four and a half. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's the Dodgers two and the Phillies nothing.
Best enough people around the uh, office while the rain delay was going. <laughs> On October 21st, 1971, the Phillies traded Larry Heisel to the Dodgers for what player? Well, I did not know. Well, you do know. I but do, you but, didn't I, but, know. I, but I did not know. I, I got the answer from Murph. So as the honest person I am, I will say my first initial guess was, what did I say? I don't remember who you either, said. So I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Murph, yeah, I do, I do Murph, know now it's Tommy Murph. Hutton. All right, Tommy Hutton. Murph, uh, yeah. how did you know that right off the top of your head? I want to I want to know that. Well, I knew it because of the clue you gave. Uh, oh, that, that we, we saw that, him that in we Miami? we saw him. All right, yeah. that was easy. Yeah. So that we saw it, him that in the press box. Well, I was impressed that you knew it. Do you remember who Matt said it was? You did uh, say somebody. No, I don't remember. I don't remember what you said either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good conversation, everybody. <laughs> we go to the bottom of the fifth. Uh, Cesar Hernandez leads it off. Hernandez showed bun on that first pitch. Something happened. I think Juan Samuel said something to the first base umpire, Seth Buckmeister. And I don't know if he was thrown out of the game or if he was warned or what. But it, it has to do with the tweet foul ball off the foot. The Phillies were not happy that the umpires, after conferring, did not see that Puig fouled the ball off his foot. I don't think I've ever seen Juan Samuel that fired up. Seriously. Fielding Colbert said that what do you want us to do? We didn't see it. So Sammy's been thrown out of this game. He's being escorted to the dugout. Again, I don't think I've ever seen him that mad. So he has been ejected from the ball game. First time in a Phil's uniform as a coach that he's been ejected. I don't know what he said. I don't know how the conversation went. Uh, but Seth Buckmeister, very young umpire, uh, throws him out of the ball game. And John Miserock, the Phillies assistant hitting coach, is going to come out and coach first. No balls, one strike to Cesar Hernandez. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Cesar grounded one up the middle his first time up. He was retired by D. Gordon. Well, I got to believe that the first pitch was a check swing, and he called it for a strike, and then. Words were exchanged and saying you could see that far, but you couldn't see the, uh, <laughs> oh, the ball so, the toe. Okay, here we go. He attempts to bunt at it, pulls the bat back. He did push at it. I thought the home plate umpire called it a strike without the help from the first base umpire. But, but that may have started the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> or finished it. Or finished it <laughs> in this case. But, but I like that. Sticking up for your your players, your, your teammates, and then go out there and make a statement saying what oh, you blew a call, and we're gonna let you know. Two-two pitch to Hernandez, outside three and two, so another three-ball count, the seventh of the night for Kershaw. John Mayberry's on deck. And ball. Ooh, a call, strike three. Four straight strikeouts for Kershaw. Boy, that looked low and outside. Seven strikeouts overall. Well, it wasn't low. Height wise was good. Yep. It's hard to say where. I think a lot has to do with the way it was framed and brought back in. That's low, a ball. Yeah, low and away, and he brings it back up. John Mayberry's the battery. Fly to center his first time up. Oh! Mayberry's hit it four straight. His average of 205. He has a home run and seven runs batted in.
Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Brewers are without Aramis Ramirez and Ryan Braun tonight, but they lead the Marlins 9 5 in the seventh. Ball left side. Sean Figgins, the third baseman, throws out Mayberry. So two outs here in the fifth. Time now for our AT&T photo, as we promised earlier in the game. This photo coming from Skimahoney 50. And you get a chance to enjoy the night at the ballpark with the fam and with some friends. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Roberto Hernandez struck out his first time up. Fouls it back. It's 0 1. Seven strikeouts for Kershaw. He's walked two. Prior to tonight, he had only walked three. And his previous innings of work. Ball swung out and missed, and the side is retired. Eight strikeouts for Kershaw. Please go down in order. We've completed five onto the sixth inning in a two nothing ball game. Everything he can to propel the Phillies offense in the right direction. Chase was blazing during the first month of the season to the tune of a 345 batting average. April turned to May and Chase kept connecting. For the first two weeks of the month, he is hovering around the 400 mark in on base percentage. He continues to sit among the National League leaders in average, on base percentage, and doubles. And his production is brought to you by. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, Chase has the only hit in tonight's ball game, and the Dodgers lead it 2 0 as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Now you know where he is. Yeah, I think I found him. Waldo's at the ballpark tonight. Andre Ethier will lead it off. Ethier is 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth. And he takes low and in. One ball, no strikes. Roberto has allowed two runs on five hits so far. And he's walked a couple. And he struck out one. Out of play, and it's one and one. Speed pitch right there. It's one and two. Now, Roberto at 79 pitches 
His last start was on the 9th of May against the Mets. He went five innings, walked three, struck out four. He's made a couple relief appearances since then. They weren't sure how long they would be able to get him to go, but he, he did throw often uh, in between. Owens off the end of the bat, flared to right center field. Bird coming hard, and he's not going to get there. Drops in for a hit. So he tears aboard a leadoff single here in the sixth. Our area's most respected weather team. Count on Hurricane Sheena and Bill for complete weather coverage. Watch NBC 10 first alert weather. You count on it. Well, they were busy yesterday with the storms that were coming through the area and the hail and the lightning. And the same with today as that storm popped up. Caused a 43 minute rain delay. Carl Crawford's the batter. He hit into a, a double play his last time. It'll be interesting to see how long they'll let Hernandez go in this game. He's at what 82 pitches now, but if you think about it, he, he throws a fastball and a changeup. So really, he's not putting no torque on his arm on that the curveballs, the sliders, the split fingers. Uh, everything has basically come out the hand, the same slot, the same rotation, just different speed. I think your point too. Uh, aside from the fourth, when he walked the two batters, uh, he has been down in the zone. Probably the worst pitch he's made tonight was the pitch to Crawford. Uh, the ball that was just up, left up, the first pitch changeup that he hit into the seats for a home run. See, now this is a perfect time to throw your slider right here. He doesn't throw many sliders, but throw it to that back foot left handers, or he can throw a front door sinker. <laughs> Two seamers worked well against Crawford in this at bat, one out here in the sixth. But it, I mean, it is a very nice front door sinker, and that's something that we see a lot of guys doing right now. And the left handers give up on it. You think it's going to be way inside, tails back over the plate, good height, good area on the, on, on the corner. But as a hitter, now all I think of is he throws a fastball and change it. If you start mixing in that slider down and in, it's a chase pitch. So now a hitter has to think, now I got to protect on three pitches instead of two. Even if it's only that one time that he gets it during the at bat. And it, right, because it could be one time in your head, your first at bat through, you might get a slider back foot. Now all of a sudden, you tell yourself, I got to keep my swing short. I got to think about that ball in the dirt. Next thing you know, the fastball's by you on a front door sinker or a good changeup. KJ Ellis, the hitter. Ellis walked his first, his last time up, flat out to center his first time. And it's one ball, no strikes to him. Drive to left. That'll be in for a hit. Ruff will cut it off, but going to third is Ethier. As the throw goes to second. Yeah, that'll put runners on first and third with one out. And Arab Arena will be the batter. The double play is still in order. Arab Arena. Uh, walked his last time up, making his major league debut with the Uribe going on the disabled list for the Dodgers. They had a spot open for an infielder. They had Guerrero, uh, the other Cuban defector, uh, down in AAA, but because of the incident with Miguel Olivo uh, and Olivo biting his ear, Guerrero wasn't prepared to play because he had to have uh, plastic surgery on that ear. So they went to Double A. Swing and a miss. It's 0 1 1. Although this kid's hitting just over 200 down in double A, they say he's a fantastic fielder. And that's one of the things that they were concerned with, just making sure they had somebody that could catch the ball at shortstop. 
This actually might be a pretty good time for a pitch out right here. First and third, you might see a squeeze. There you go. He bunts at it. It would have been a safety squeeze, and it's 0 and 2. Thing you want to do right here is throw him a strike. He's, he, he's shown he's gone out of the strike zone. Just the ball somewhere he'll swing at it. Good pitch. Good location on the fastball, though. Nine mile an hour backdoor sinker. The hitter, who was the shortstop, gave up on that pitch as it was coming in. <laughs> Phillies have the infield halfway. They'll make a decision on whether they'll turn a double player come home. Swing it and miss. He got him. Two outs. Third strikeout for Hernandez. And now, if he can get Kershaw, he'll see his way through the sixth inning. Very good sequence of pitches right here and finishes him off with that split change he throws down the zone and had him out in front. Very nice pitch. Kershaw is 0 for 3. He's put the ball in play both times. He's grounded a shortstop in the second. Carlos asked for time. It wasn't Kershaw. Matty Gonzalez immediately pointed to the catcher. Play by Carlos. The ball was biting in, and he was able to block it and keep the runner at third and the runner at first. Straight gato back there. Cat and Spanish <laughs> moving left and right, blocking uh, the balls in the dirt. But Carlos just walked out in front of home plate and went through a sequence of signs. Which tells me that if uh, Ellis decides to steal second base, they're going to let him have it and hold your position. Right side up the gets to his left throws to first Good job by Roberto Hernandez to work out of this jam first and third with one man down gets a strike out and a ground out now we go to the bottom of the sixth inning we'll see if the top of the order can get something rolling.
popular shophonda.com buy mcdonald's any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar mcdonald's i'm loving it and by at t mobilizing your world well, that's a great shot of city hall on a cool night now after the rains come through this area not a whole lot of traffic rolling around broad street Clayton Kershaw getting set to begin his sixth inning. Eight strikeouts for Kershaw. Well, tomorrow night the Phillies will have a major league debut, Murph, and I think a lot of folks anticipated that David Buchanan would be up here uh, maybe even sooner than tomorrow, but he's going to get his first starts. Well, he certainly had a chance to make the team out of spring training. They wanted him to go down and uh, get a little bit more work, but he was a non-roster invitee to spring training, and he really did impress. He had an ERA of about mid-twos and went one and one, and uh, Ryan Sandberg said today, you know, he's a guy that was uh, a guy that threw strikes, kept the ball down in the zone, and had a really good demeanor went about his business the right way and he really impressed people and then you look at his numbers at the Lehigh Valley five and one with an ERA of 3.98 so with Cliff Lee going on the disabled list he was the likely choice to come up and uh, make his major league debut and we're going to get a chance to see that tomorrow and, and this is his day well, tomorrow's his day you know Cliff was uh, scheduled to pitch on Saturday but because of the elbow injury uh, he was put on the DL but this is David Buchanan's day in the rotation anyway so yeah. uh, it fits Earlier in the season, when there was an opportunity, it didn't fit. Jonathan Pettibone then got that opportunity. Jimmy Rollins will lead it off here in the sixth. Well, I think we were all very impressed with David Buchanan in spring training. I think we're all looking forward to seeing what he does tomorrow night here at Citizens Bank Park. Rollins lines it foul. You know, Tom, he made uh, nine starts uh, down in the Lehigh Valley, and in seven of those, he allowed three earned runs or less as well. So, you know, now, albeit that is the AAA level, the Major League level is certainly different, but, uh, you know, like I said, he's a guy that, uh, that you know, pitches to contact and, and just throws strikes, and that's what this pitch, or the pitching coach here and, uh, and Ryan Sandberg like. It. Rollins breaks his bat, sends one down the left field line on his way to seconds. Here's the throw by Crawford, not in time. A leadoff double for Jimmy Rollins, his seventh of the year. And he's in scoring position. Two thousand two hundred nineteen hits now for Rollins. It's a fastball off to the zone. And Jimmy stays inside of it, hits the ball actually off the end of the bat. I thought he could jam with the initial swing, but. Jimmy's been doing his Jimmy's good job. Doesn't matter if he's leading off, hitting second, just being patient. And there you see him moving up. Ever so close to the great Mike Schmidt. 2,219 hits. 15 away from tying Schmidty, and then 16 away from uh, taking over the top spot. Here's Ruiz, and Carlos takes a fastball tight. 1 0. Carlos walked his last time up. Balls and no strikes. AJ Ellis going out to the mound. Well, I had a chance to talk to Carlos uh, earlier today, and I asked him about that foul ball that he took off down in Miami. He said it was by far the hardest foul ball that he's ever taken off the face. He said he was seeing stars, are kind of you know, he set back a little bit. He wasn't just trying to get his thought process going, but. He said it was a backup cutter. He turned his head a little bit, caught him right in the bottom of the jaw. That was in game two of that series, and, and he needed a moment or two to, to gather himself. Here we go fastball, and it's three and one.
but he was covering second and Kershaw fires it to D Gordon who is five or six feet away from the second base bag. I think Gordon was a little surprised by that. Well, here's that foul ball Matt was talking about the other night. It's a great view of it. Ooh. We realized it right when it happened. Listen to it. I was like, hey, you see how far that the mask went after it hit me? I mean, it was a full contact right to the chin. They really wanted to give him the whole day yesterday uh, after that that occurred on Wednesday night. Ball four, runners on first and second with nobody out here in the sixth inning. The Dodgers do have bullpen action behind Clayton Kershaw. They have the lefty J.P. Howell who's up. And the right-hander Brandon Lee. Another trip to the mound for A.J. Ellis. Chase Utley is one for two. He doubled his last time up. Though he's at second and third with nobody out in the fourth. But Kershaw was able to strike out the next three hitters. Now Rick Honeycutt's going to come out to the mound after the conversation between Ellis and Kershaw. I don't think Clayton Kershaw is too happy that Rick Honeycutt has come out to the mound to talk to him after A.J. Ellis was out there having a conversation with him. His reaction when Honeycutt came up the stairs, he stepped off the back of the mound and, and he was not pleased. I don't even know if Rick Honeycutt said anything to him. <laughs> this is Kershaw. He's getting ready to pitch. Ellis is already back behind the plate. Oh, look at that. I think Ellis realizes it too. <laughs> He doubled his last time up down the left field line. I just wonder if Kershaw was angry thinking that it was Mattingly coming out. Oh, well, he could have. Or I think he was just mad. <laughs> <laughs> Fly ball toward right. Puig on the run. It's not deep. Rollins tags. And he's not going to challenge the arm of Puig. So one out here in the sixth. And Marlon Bird's coming up. All right, Marlon's been struck out twice tonight. In fact, the four, five, and six have combined for five strikeouts in six at bats. What kind of adjustment do you think Marlon's made after those first two ABs? Well, I'm hoping he he, he sits back and, and just lets the ball get a little deeper. You know, the first couple of bats, he was jumpy, trying to hit the location instead of the, the pitch that was coming in. Popped him up. Foul territory. Long run for Gonzalez and Ellis, and Gonzalez makes the catch. Well, the Phils have to figure something out here. They've had opportunities against Kershaw, at least two opportunities, and they haven't been able to push a run across the plate. Now two away for Ryan Howard. I'm 
it comes back to we've, we've talked about situational hitting and, and being patient and, and swinging at your pitch instead of going out there and going out of the strike zone. Look early in the count in a certain area where your strength is, and then until till two strikes, then you make the adjustment. It almost looked like he got change up after change up after change up. His last at bat, now all of a sudden you get a fastball, and he was jumping all over it. Howard's 0 for 2. Kershaw's allowed just two hits so far. First pitch strikes, 19 of 23 hitters, including Ryan Howard, who's down in the count 0 and 1. The streak that he's riding right now. And now he asks for Ellis to come out. Side part of the plate 94 Howard's been struck out three times tonight nine strikeouts overall for Kershaw the Phillies leave a couple more they had the first two batters aboard to start the sixth but they haven't been able to scratch a run. Well, there is no place like Philadelphia. The Phillies trail at 2 nothing as we go to the top of the seventh inning. They're 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. Kershaw, nine strikeouts. He's only allowed two hits through six. As we take a look at our local Honda dealers game summary, we'll go to the top of the seventh. And D. Gordon fouls the first pitch over his dugout now to play. It's 0 and 1. Phillies 8 and 12 here at Citizens Bank Park. This is the start of an 11 game homestand. They've had a couple of opportunities against Clayton Kershaw, but they were unable to push a run across the plate. 
Say a couple of opportunities. They had a couple of opportunities with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. Meanwhile, Roberto Hernandez has done his job. Two runs over six. Well, so much for limitations tonight for Roberto. He's had none. He's about to throw his 97 pitch. In the game between the Rockies and the Braves, Michael Kadire is homered, and that game is tied at two in the top of the seventh. He played down in Atlanta. Gavin Floyd made the start for the Braves. He's still in there. Gavin coming back from Tommy John surgery. Receiver has been pretty effective for him tonight. He didn't get it there as Hollins is warming in the bullpen. Foul ball that got a part of uh, Carlos's shoulder right there. Well, Mario Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, was going out just to give him some time. Watch this ball off the bat of Gordon. Right off the 51. Man's been taking a beating. <laughs> Outside ball for Gordon's aboard to start the seventh. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizen Five. Good backing is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizen Bank. Good banking is good citizenship. Sean Figgins, uh, 0 for 3 in this ball game. Well, D. Gordon has stolen two bases already tonight. Dodgers lead it by two. Figure he's going to be off and running at some point. Pickens took a long look over Lorenzo Bundy in the third base coach's box. Let's see if there's anything on here for the Dodgers. Outside, 2 0. There's Lorenzo. Did he manage you in the Mexican League? Yes, he did. He's a legend yep. in the Mexican League as a manager.
This is probably a good time to steal right here. Two balls, no strikes. You want to throw a strike, and it's actually, it wouldn't be a hit and run. It'd be a run and hit. You give him a chance to steal the base, but if it's there, you go ahead and swing and try to drive it. There he goes. The pitch is low. The throw has no chance. Great play by Rollins to stop that one from going out into the outfield. Three stolen bases tonight for Gordon. He now has 28 on the year. You know, just had another tremendous jump, and what it does is it makes the, the catchers, especially Ruiz right now, try to speed up everything so much and, and end up making a bad throw because he's getting away from the footwork. Uh, just because really the pitchers aren't giving him an opportunity to throw anybody out right now. We mentioned the numbers in May. It's not good as far as the Phillies catchers go. They've only thrown out two runners trying to steal in the month of May. Hernandez keeping Gordon close, spun around, thought maybe somebody was there, and it looked like he was going to throw that ball. Now you wonder if Figgins. Well, he may just try to pull the ball to get him over to third. This would be a great time to do a sacrifice. Well, that's what I was thinking that maybe he could sacrifice, even though it's, there's a strike on the board. He is a good bunter, and he does bunt toward first. He's trying to bunt for a base hit as well, and it rolls foul. Two balls and two strikes. Don Manley trying to get that extra run. His team already up 2 0. They got a run in the first and a run in the second. Now this pitch here should be a good fastball away sinker. Uh, he tried to do what he did the first at bat to hit a weak fly ball to left field. But you don't want to throw a change up in the situation because it's very easy to get out and roll over on it to a ground ball to second. Bird heading back. He's going to have room. Tagging from second is Gordon. Over to third goes Gordon. One down. Puig's coming up. For more on Yasiel Puig, here's Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, he is the subject of our Lowe's Never Stop Improving Player profile. Check out the month of May that Yasiel Puig has had. Batting 418. That's with his three hits tonight. Seven home runs, seven doubles. 23 RBIs in the month and his slugging percentage is the highest slugging percentage of any Dodger in history in any given month. He is had certainly having a month to remember as Yasiel Puig. They, they say that he is playing like he played uh, the first month he was up last year. And he's not thinking about too much. He's not worrying about too much. He's just playing the game. And one thing you're going to notice about him is that he enjoys the game. He has fun playing it. Yeah he'll have, he'll make a lot of mistakes. Being over aggressive, but the biggest thing I noticed in his stance from what we saw the first time in is that he trusts his hands, he's swinging at strikes, he's not trying to do too much. Well, and in this lineup where they, you know, they've struggled at times, you know, they find themselves two games over 500 at 25 and 23. And you go through their lineup, Gonzalez is having a very good year, Puig is having an outstanding year, but you know, beyond that, there have been some struggles for the Dodgers offensively. And he is popular. No doubt about that. And they're going to walk him intentionally. Adrian Gonzalez, who does have 34 runs batted in. Is the on deck batter? They may go to Mario Hollins to face him. Hollins is warming up in the pen, or they could keep Hernandez in and just hope for a ground ball since he is a sinker ball pitcher. Although Gonzalez has three fly ball outs tonight.
Kershaw who has allowed just the two hits he may be done. Dodgers have had bullpen action for quite a while. So there's ball four to Puig. And here comes Ryan Sandberg so. It looks like it will be Mario Hollins that will come on to face Adrian Gonzalez lefty on lefty. Here in the top of the seventh inning. Roberto, Roberto gets a pat on the back from Ryan Howard. He gives the baseball to Ryan Sandberg. So we've got a pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park with the Phillies down by two. Down and Mario Hollins is the new pitcher. Time now for a cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. And yes, this is the anniversary of Tommy Green's no hitter. He struck out 10 against the Expos in Montreal through 130 pitches in just his second start of the season. I was up at Olympic Stadium in Montreal and you can vividly remember the celebration of Tommy Green throwing that no hitter. Roberto Hernandez did not throw a no hitter here tonight but he did a nice job six and a third scattered seven hits now the two runners on base are his responsibility. But he's going to give way to his teammate Mario Hollins with the lefty Adrian Gonzalez coming up. See Mario's numbers in his first year in the big leagues. He has Gonzalez and then Ethier, so that's why it's Hollins here. With D. Gordon in the third and Yasiel Puig at first. Ground ball to shortstop. That might be two. There's one. Utley's throw to first in time, and the side is retired. Excellent job by Mario Hollins, and the fill still within reach as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, and one man left.
two hits. A couple times he was in trouble, Matt, but he worked his way out of that trouble. Yeah, he was in the fourth inning, and second and third with nine out. It seemed like he bared down, made some quality pitches at that time to get out of, uh, out of the uh, inning. And then again, the sixth inning, he had first and second with nine out. Bared down, made some quality pitches to get out the third and Howard with a strikeout look. Well, Kershaw has won three straight ERA titles. Kershaw, Maddox, Clemens, Sandy Koufax, and Lefty Rose. Kershaw's ERA tonight went from 4.43 to 3.49. He doesn't have as many innings as most starters this year because of the injury that put him on the disabled list after his initial start. On the other side, Roberto Hernandez, he went six to the third. Uh, Mario Hollins was able to roll the double play ball to wrap up the seventh inning for the Dodgers. Brandon League is the new pitcher for Los Angeles. He's no longer a closer, but has found himself uh, in some key spots this year and has some good numbers for L.A. And he'll face Ben Revere, who's going to pinch hit for Darren Ruff here in the bottom of the seventh. Soon Ben will stay in the play center field and then Mayberry will move over to left field. Two balls, no strikes to Revere. Brandon Lake coming in on a high pitch and extremely well with some squirrely in innings, but he's a guy that used to rely on a power sinker up in upper 90s. Now he'll top out about 94 miles an hour, and his out pitch is a split finger fastball, about 86 miles an hour. Mentioned that he has closed before. In fact, the Dodgers bullpen is filled with former closers. Back toward the middle and a base hit for Ben Revere. Nice way to start the seventh inning because of that double play by Mario Hollins. The tying run is coming to the plate. Cesar Hernandez. Got a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night on Monday evening when the Phillies take on the Colorado Rockies. It's game one of a three game series. You can purchase tickets for that ball game anytime by going to Phillies.com. Phillies will also have a salute to veterans. Cesar is over two. Beer on first. Outside, one ball, no strikes. The fanatic has made his presence known down near the dugout. Stardo in the bullpen for the Phillies. Ethier is due to lead off the top of the eighth inning. And Crawford is due to follow him. So the Stardo, a left hander, up to face those lefties. The Phillies hope they can tie it or take the lead. JP Howell is up. That's a good take right there. You uh, facing a guy who has a good sinker slash runner. You want to have the ball in the middle of the plate if you're going to commit to swinging at it. But anything that starts middle of the plate or outer half, especially outer half, you have to let it go because that's the one they get to roll over on. Inside ball four, two on with nobody out. So we said two on with nobody out in the sixth. Could not score. They had two on and nobody out in the fourth and could not score. So they'll try it again. Mayberry is being called back. Tony Gwynn is coming up. They 
J. Ellis out to talk to Brandon Lee. Now they're going to bring everybody in on the infield because when there's a good chance he's up there to move the runners up into scoring position, right, Matt? I would believe so. I mean, if, if this is an area where you want to bring him in and uh, try to get a bunt down to third base, uh, make the third baseman feel the position and make you throw to first base because Adrian Gonzalez is going to be charging very hard from first base and try to get that force at third. Phillies have an all left handed bench aside from Will Nieves tonight. Phillies 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. Dodgers haven't been much better at 1 for 7. Infield, the corners at least are pinching in. Gwynn squares and he bunts it foul. That's what he was trying to do was get it over to third. Dominic Brown has come out of the on deck circle. Bunts it perfectly toward third. League bare hands throws low, and everybody's safe. Revere thought about coming home, but he stops. Sacrifice E1, and the bases are loaded for Dominic Brown. Even though they had the tarp on the field, the infield is a little wet. Of Leak's foot slipped out from under him. I don't know if that's perfect technique of getting the barrel out in front of home plate, not jabbing at it, using your lower half to deaden the ball. Brandon Leak is known throughout his career to have a tough time throwing to bases. I was a teammate and I played first sometimes, so. And plus, when you have a guy running down the base path full speed like Tony, it makes the pitchers hurry up and. In that situation, you go to E1. All right, well, they're going to make a pitching change with the bases loaded here in the seventh inning and nobody out. The Phillies with a chance to get on the board and maybe get some more. J.P. Howell is coming in for Brandon League. His night is done. He's responsible for all three base runners. Phillies trail at 2 0 here in the bottom of the seventh. Game and this was a whopper, Matt, because it kept it a two-run game. Yeah, it was. And Merrill Holmes came in and made a nice two-seamer away to, for a double play. Nice job on Utley to get in position with a tough throw from Jimmy Rollins. Big part of the game, and that is your defensive play of the game. Brought to you by Hyundai. All right, so Revere's over at third base for the Phils. Cesar Hernandez is at second. Tony Gwynn is at first. Nobody out. J.P. Howell is the pitcher, and Dominic Brown is the pinch hitter.
Dominic lines one toward left field, and it is caught by Crawford, and Revere's got to hustle back to third. Carl Crawford, a former gold glover, snares that one as he slides. Ben probably should have gone back and tagged it at third. He would have scored anyway. Yeah, tough break for Dominic Brown. Did a great job of getting the ball to left field on the line, but anytime a ball goes over the infielder's heads in the air as a third baseman, you're taught to go back to third base because if the ball bounces in front of him, you're going to score easily enough. Now all of a sudden he makes a great play. You have a chance to tag up and still score. You're basically going station to station. So Revere misread that one in a big way. But one out, still bases loaded, and Rollins, who doubled his last time up, he's one for three. Pete McCann was saying something to Revere too. He basically did that all on his own. You can see him breaking as, as soon as the ball left the bat. Well, there, that's where Pete's coming over and say, okay, anything in the air, you're going back to tag on. Watch the line drives and on the ground, you're going on contact. Ground ball to third. That could be two. No, Figgins is coming home with that one. He couldn't turn the double play with Rollins running, but they do get Revere at the plate. Two outs. Fielder's choice, and Carlos Ruiz is coming up. For a relief pitcher, the inherited runner stat is huge, and Howell has done his job. This is a situation here where Jimmy hits the ball hard to third base, and Swan figures just figures that he has a chance to go ahead and get the out at home plate instead of taking the chance of going around the horn and trying to get double play. Yeah, with some runners, many runners, you would go around the hall, uh, around the around the horn with that one, but with Rollins' speed, it was the right decision. Carlos has walked twice. He's 0 for one. J.P. Howell got Dominic Brown to line one to left for the first out. Revere didn't tag. Got caught off third. So the Phil squandered a chance to get a run there. Then he got Rollins to hit a chopper to third. Two and up. Screwball the way it dropped away. He was trying to get a run here. They had the bases loaded and nobody out. Now bases loaded, two outs, the count two and one to Ruiz. Carlos lofts it toward right center. Krieg is coming in. He's there. And the side is retired. No runs. One hit. The Phillies leave them loaded. A base running mistake here in the seventh inning. We'll go to the eighth. It's the Dodgers two. And the Phillies nothing.
Baseball is brought to you by Nissan. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life. Plus bonus cash. Shop ChooseNissan.com. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Top of the eighth, it's 2-0. Dodgers on top. Antonio Pistardo is starting to warm up for the Phils out on the mounds. Phils had a golden opportunity to get some runs in their half of the seventh, but... They were unable to do so. So now Bastardo will come on to face Andre Ethier and Carl Crawford. Tony Gwynn stays in the ball game to play left field for the Phillies. And Ben Revere stays in to play center field. Basically the same situation with Mario Hollins. Keep it at a two-run game. That's what Bastardo's responsibility is here in the eighth inning. EPA reached on an infield hit his last time up. Hit by a pitch in the fourth and grounded out his first time. Side one ball, no strikes. to right field Marlon Bird is over and he's not going to get there he'll cut it off on the track but Ethier's on his way to seconds uh, the throw off line it's a leadoff double with the runner on here's Carl Crawford and it's time for the major league notebook Murph all right thanks Tom brought to you by Gwinnett versus University and the first place Blue Jays are not standing pat they have uh, selected the contract of minor leaguer Liam uh, Liam Hendricks Hendricks did start tonight for the Blue Jays and uh, actually got the win for the Blue Jays today uh, to make room for him they designated to for assignment Ezra Rogers out of their bullpen and the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates also getting a player back tonight Jason Grilly he was uh, battling that oblique strain had been on the disabled list but he is back and active tonight and originally Clint Hurdle had said he was not going to use him in the closer position right away he was going to allow him to kind of get back into the swing of things but that game just went final i just checked that box score and he did get the save tonight his fifth of the year so jason Gurley back in the closer role as well guys all right murph thank you we appreciate that it's amazing how quick managers can change their minds <laughs> guy does the job so well he and melanson uh, last year were a great one two punch and Melanson did a fantastic job when Grilly was hurt last year as the closer. Crawford takes a strike it's 0 2. But you're right. Managers they know it works or they know what they're comfortable with. The balls and two strikes. You fear over at second. Chopper back toward the mound. Bastardo, oh, he pumped to third. It's going to cost him. I don't know what he heard. I don't know what he thought. But now instead of one out and a runner at second, you got nobody out. And runners on first and second for Ellis. Well, Jamie said the other day, don't assume anything. I think he assumed that he was end up going to third base on that tap back and you're right Tom the little pump to third base and spin to first not profiting down the baseline. Well the Phillies just aren't playing a smart game tonight in some ways uh, you know whether it be Ben over third on the line drive by Dominic Brown or even a play right there. Bob McClure is out to the mound to talk to Bastardo. There's Brian Wilson in the bullpen for the Dodgers. 
Well, now Ellis is probably going to do the same thing. Try to bump the runners up into scoring position. Both of them. They have Ethier at second and Crawford at first. Not up there to bunt. Takes inside. One ball, no strikes. Ellis does have a hit tonight. He's walked and he's fly to center. One for two. By the way, from a scoring standpoint, they've scored that at infield single for Carl Crawford. Fly ball right center field. Bird's going to make the play on this one. It's not deep enough to allow Ethier to tag and go. So that keeps runners at first and second with one out. And Ara Barena is going to come up for the Dodgers. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies haven't done that yet tonight. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Barena tonight is 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. He's walked. Mayor Barena was the starting shortstop for Cuba in the most recent World Baseball Classic. Play 0 and 2. Ball toward the outer edge of the plate. He's uh, struck out three times in this ball game. So two away, and Hanley Ramirez will be introduced as a pinch hitter for the Dodgers. Hanley did not start tonight. Hitting 297 against the Phils for his career. 251 this year overall. With seven home runs. Had some big games against the Phillies when he's with the Miami Marlins. I'm still trying to figure out how they gave Crawford a single on that ball back to Pastardo. Well, it was the fielder's choice. It was the fielder's choice to make a bad choice. <laughs> Ball to deep left field. Win back pedals has room and he makes the catch. So Bastardo works out of the jam here in the eighth inning. No runs, two hits, two men left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning and Chase Utley will lead it off when we come back.
collection of children's books released on the first of each month. Each bobble is part of a limited edition run. Get yours before they're gone. Available exclusively at the Majestic Clubhouse store at Citizens Bank Park. Bottom of the eighth inning, it's 2 0. Dodgers are on top. Phillies had a horrific bottom of the seventh. And now they'll try to go back to work against Brian Wilson here in the bottom of the eighth. It'll be Chase Utley, Marlon Bird, and Ryan Howard. Utley is one for three in tonight's ball game. His one was a double. Brian Wilson, the former closer for the Giants, has appeared in 19 games for the Dodgers. An ERA of 8.22, 33 base runners in 15 and a third. First pitch is over, it's 0 1. Ball and one strike. Phillies again down by just two, trying to get a base runner on. They've left eight tonight. Guys going for little Brian Wilson. Look, huh? <laughs> on the outside corner, it's one and two. I'm almost tempted if the offense continues to struggle. I might go that luck. You see that right now with me, that big beard? Well, I can't go on the top of my head. I can see the beard. I can't see the mohawk, though, unless you want to do a, a horseshoe <laughs> mohawk. Outside, it's two and two. So we started play tonight, five games behind the Braves in the National League East. Atlanta's tied right now with the Rockies in the eighth inning. And up he rips it foul. It remains two and two. Meanwhile, the Dodgers are in third in the West behind the Giants, who are 29 and 18. And four and a half games back behind San Francisco. The Giants scored three against the Twins in the first inning of their ball game. Had a rough night. He's in the on deck circle. Shave your beard. Phillies tried a three nothing in in yesterday's ball game against the Marlins before they scored three in the eighth. We're here in the eighth now. They're down by two. And Utley fouls another one off. Eight pitch at bat. This will be the ninth coming against Brian Wilson. Of Manny Gonzalez, the home plate umpire. 
next. I have to say, I'm finding it remarkable that we found two folks who have similar looks to Brian Wilson. Obviously, Dodger fans, but I, I, I don't know. Speechless. <laughs> Not one, but two. Well, they're loyal fans, that's for sure. I guess so. And a call, strike three. That was a cutter on the outside part of the plate. It was close. And now Marlon Bird is coming up. Yeah, that's just a pitch here. Ellis is set up and way. See, like you said, Tom was a backdoor cutter. Well, I'm a firm believer that a backdoor cutter or a backdoor slider is never a strike because it never crosses the plate. And the catcher does have to frame it yep. a little bit. I will argue that until I'm six feet under. And if it is a strike, then you're going to hit it. Right. And it's a tough pitch for a left hander because you give up on it because it starts outside the strike zone and never comes back towards across the plate. Well, a 10 pitch at bat. Now Marlon Bird is the hitter. He's 0 for 3. Ground ball foul. It's 0 and 1. Side. Marlowe will be followed by Ryan Howard here in the bottom of the eighth inning in a 2 0 game, a game that was delayed 43 minutes because of rain. Bird has struck out for the third time tonight. Back to back strikeouts for Brian Wilson. For complete coverage of the day's major stories, breaking news, and weather, watch NBC 10. Count up. Eleven strikeouts for Dodger pitching in tonight's ball game. Nine for Kershaw, two here for Wilson. Ryan Howard, who has struck out three times, is the batter. Howard has struck out looking twice. Kershaw threw him a lot of fastballs tonight. Howard hits it down the left field line. And it slices foul 0 and 1. He's throwing one cutter after another in this inning. Got Utley looking on a cutter that came back to her. Threw a couple to Bird, but he really got him with a high fastball. And now the cutter is to Ryan Howard. It's two balls and two strikes. A 
Well, he was called out on a similar pitch. The only two difference this one is that was a sinker. Actually, it was a backdoor cutter as well. Just a little lower than the one to chase. Opposite way for Howard Crawford on the run, and he tracks it down. And the side is retired. Phillies are retired in order. Brian Wilson gets it done for the Dodgers. We'll go to the ninth inning here in Philadelphia with the Dodgers up two. Slugger plastic bat compliments of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 98. It's free defense 14 and under as we mentioned. You can get tickets still by going to Phillies.com or stop by the box office. Well, this is the start of Memorial Day weekend. We hope you have a safe, uh, a safe one. We hope you get a chance to enjoy some family and also get a chance to remember those who gave their lives for our great country. Phillies will be here on Memorial Day. It's a 505 start. It's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night here at Citizens Bank Park. Antonio Bastardo stays in the game to face D. Gordon. Sean Figgins, who's a switch hitter, is on is in the on-deck circle. Gordon has been on base twice today. He has three stolen bases. Got a breaking ball outside. It's one and oh. in the air Ruiz will make the catch and one out here in the ninth inning well, that'll bring Figgins up Figgins is 0 for 4 Figgins is average uh, has dipped to 222 with his 0 for 4. He doesn't have a whole lot of at bats here in the big leagues. This is a guy that, I mean, he helped the Angels in the American League West. Signed a big contract with the Seattle Mariners and just never panned out. It's remarkable, you know, that there have been players that have gone from one end of the spectrum to another very quickly, but this guy went fast. You played against him. You know what kind of player he was when he was at his peak with the, with the Angels. No, so it was unbelievable. I mean, he had a chance to. He he would bunt. He would hit for occasional power. Play very good defense. And he was playing third base at a point where, you know, after Salmon retired or Salmon got hurt, whatever, he filled in very nicely. And Tom, like you said, once he went to Seattle, it was a, a struggle from day one. Very close friends with Juan Pierre. In fact, uh, they've worked uh, diligently together 
at times in the offseason to get themselves ready for uh, years. Outside by Bastardo, two and two. Kenley Jensen is the closer for the Dodgers. And there are two outs. And now Yasiel Puig. Reminder tomorrow is a 305 first pitch will be on the air on Comcast Sportsnet at 3 o'clock. Phillies pregame live will get underway at 2.30. And it'll be the major league debut for David Buchanan. Kid who we saw in spring training we're very impressed with. He had a tough outing his last time out again for Lehigh Valley. Uh, his numbers are good though in Triple A. First pitch coming to Puig. Throws him a slider. He's thinking fastball, and it's 0-1. Balls, one strike to Puig. And ball four, Puig draws a walk. Been on base all five times. Well, last night we were debating about whose catch was better, this one or John Carlos Stanton. This is an unbelievable play. Yeah, we talked about this for a while, and the, the distance he went and the height he caught the ball off the playing surface was unbelievable. And we talked about Stanton yesterday making about seven or eight strides. He was about 27 strides to catch that ball and, and deep into right center. Well, both were great catches. They really were. This is Stanton's catch. And don't forget, the bases were loaded, and Ashy was about to clear the bases if Stanton didn't make this grab. That's Ugh. a nice play, but that's. I don't think it's even close to this play. It's amazing that we're saying, which one's easier? <laughs> Outside, one and one to Gonzalez. His teammates, Puig's teammates, were just raving about his play, and it was right now. It's probably the catch of the year. One strike to Gonzalez hit into a double play his last time up. Fouls it away. It's two and two.
Quig leads off first and the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got Gonzalez and the side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left. The start of two scoreless innings. Phillies have one last chance. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. They trail it 2 0 to the Dodgers. is in a negative way. The Phillies had a terrible seventh inning. It didn't start out that way. They loaded up the bases. Brown, a pinch hitter, lines one beautifully to left. Great play by Crawford. But Ben Revere, he didn't tag up. He went halfway down the line and couldn't get back. And then Rollins grounds one to Figgins. They get the force out at, at home. And then Carlos Ruiz, Matt. Yeah, and it was an inning that looked so promising. Starting off the bases loaded. Dominic Brown does a nice job driving the ball to left field. Although Crawford did make a very nice play. He did. Then you have the brain cramp on the base pass by Ben Rivera not tagging on the play. Now all of a sudden the pitcher has a little confidence saying I'm put one pitch away from getting a double play. Rollins hits the chopper to third base. Vegas throws out. And then all of a sudden uh, Carlos flies up the right field. Well as mentioned the Phillies are 8 and 12 here at Citizens Bank Park and. If they lose tonight they'll fall five games under 500 overall as Kenley Jansen warms up. They've made a lot of mistakes during the course of the season. I mean, they, they need to clean up, you know, whether it be the base running mistake by Revere uh, or the brain cramp by Bastardo on that little tapper, which didn't affect anything. No run scored, but you know, there have been a lot of those during the course of the season. It's part of the reason why they're 20 and 25. So now Jansen, the closer for the Dodgers. Not a lights out closer. He does have good stuff though. He's got a very good cutter. And he'll face Ben Revere, who did single his last time up as a pinch hitter. Yeah, and his his cutter will go anywhere between 93 and 97 mile an hour fastball. Uh, but he's he's a guy that just he lives up in the strike zone and he'll throw cutter after cutter and almost like a Mariano Rivera type cutter. Yeah, his cutter is basically his fastball. It's a fastball that has that cutting action. Right. So Revere who Pinch hit in the seventh inning. Takes inside. One ball, no strikes. To the Phillies trail at only 2 nothing. They've managed only three hits tonight. Tonight's as good a time as any to end that stretch right there. It's now one ball and two strikes to Ben.
Last game for Jansen was Wednesday. Picked up the save against the Mets. Outside, two and two. Third base dug out out of play. Revere stays alive. So we still have Ashy, Brignac, and Nieves to come off the bench. There's Cody. Cesar Hernandez is on deck. The pitcher spot is up in the nine hole. And that's after Gwynn, who follows Cesar. Chopper back over the glove of Jansen. One out. So Revere's retired. Cesar is grounded out to the second. He's also struck out looking. He walked in the seventh. Part of the first three batters getting aboard. Out of play, 0 and 1. Suddenly, Jansen is a converted catcher. Comment all the time about the fact that he used to catch, and if he did get to the big leagues as a catcher, he would have been one of the largest catchers you had ever seen. Out of play again, 0 and 2. Yeah, he would have been definitely one of the guys you want to stay away from having a collision at home plate. <laughs> Times called AJ Ellis will go out to the mound to talk to Jansen. Down on strikes, he got that one up to 96 miles an hour, and they're two away. So 12 strikeouts for Dodger pitching in this ball game. We had the little conference before, and AJ wants that high fastball in the zone, and he got it—the high cutter. See, so he almost got in that almost in-between swing. Like, should I go or shouldn't I? And Good location with the high fastball. Cody Ashley's come out of the on deck circle. So now Tony Gwynn with two outs. Philly's been shut out four times here in the month of May. If they get shut out here tonight, it'll be five, which happened back in May of 2010. Tony Gwynn looked like he said something to the home plate umpire about where that pitch was. It's 0 and 1. So he's had trouble with runners in scoring position. Hit this tonight with runners in scoring position. Off the hands, out toward left. Carl Crawford's there. And the ball game is over. Kenley Jansen works a 1 2 3 ninth inning, and the Dodgers take game one by a final of 2 to nothing. And with the loss, the Phillies are now 8 and 13 here at Citizens Bank Park. Well, again, the offense struggling to get a whole lot. They did have a few opportunities. 
the seventh inning was the backbreaker for the Phillies as Don Mattingly's bullpen somehow worked out of a bases loaded and nobody out situation. Clayton Kershaw went six innings tonight. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. And he came out and he really he threw two pitches a fastball and the changeup. Didn't have great command of his curveball tonight. But in the fourth inning, he ended up getting a, a release single and up a double. Then he bared down and struck out the side with uh, Bird Howard and Ruff. And really, it wasn't sharp all night, but he made quality pitches when he needed to and gave his chance to, to win the game. So Clayton Kershaw gets the victory. He's now three and one. The Phillies shut out for the fifth time here in the month of May. They lose it two nothing. We'll be back to Citizens Bank Park to wrap things up right after this.